let's go live now. All right, folks, here we are. Oh, well, let's just start. I'll wait for this thing to start. <laughs> right, here we are, folks, on the Trading View Challenge, replay challenge number 16. We've got Jason Stewart here, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, over there in the US. How's things over there, Jason? Going great, man. Glad to be here, round two. And, uh, you know, see what we can do, see see how we can teach, impact some people, and then hopefully they can go implement it themselves. Brilliant. Well, look, um, this is, uh, I'm so glad to get you back on because I know the episode we had, I got some amazing feedback on it. Guys, if you haven't heard it, go and check it out. It's episode 100 of the Trading Up podcast. Uh, uh, there's a YouTube video as well that we did. So go and check it out because it is one of the, probably one of the best episodes of the year and that's what i was saying when i was uh promoting it so guys go and check that out after you've seen jason go through five uh, trades here and this is how it's going to work so let me show you in this prezo uh so the trading challenge you can basically we're going to put you in a, a time in the past uh i know you like to go to the five minute chart but we're going to limit it to 30 minutes just because it gives us more time to work with uh the trader can skip forward in time to find your entry setup, so you can skip forward as long as you want. Uh, you can, well, obviously up until the current time and then you sort of run out of time. <laughs> um, traders can cancel their trade setup any time before their entry triggers. Uh, you can reduce your stop loss, but you can't extend it. Uh, only one partial 50% exit is allowed per trade, and rankings are based on overall R gained during the five trade challenge. Now, if you don't know what R is, which uh, I know some people don't. It's basically your stop loss is one R. So anything on your profit is your stop loss, uh, a multiple of your stop loss. Uh, maximum stop loss, 500 pips or 5,000 points, depending on what, I think you're trading just currency pairs, so, so we should be good. So that's it, those are the rules. This is These are the current standings. So Jason, this is, um, if you wanna to top the leaderboard, which you know, some people go at this with just pure education, uh, others are, are trying to, you know, be the best of the best here and top the top uh, the leaderboard. So you've got to get seven over seven point six five R to top uh, to make it to the top of the leaderboard. Here we've got Austin Semenik, Canadian, uh, followed by another Canadian Forex uh, at the top two spots there. So, guys, this is uh, this is it. So we've got this coming up. We just before we get into it, we've got this coming up. It's a trader versus trader special. We've got Forex. I just mentioned who was second in the leaderboard versus JP Savage, who had a a bit of a, a bit of a last minute trading view replay challenge. We didn't really get a score out of that, uh, and also there's a whole bunch of other stuff on the channel. The band ICT full story, um, Daniel Savage's live forex trading room unedited. So these are in the member section of the YouTube, and I also just uploaded this one from uh, Druzy Banks. He did he shown us his five thousand dollar. Uh, trades that he did in one day. Really great education in that video as well. Now, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we're gonna head over to you and get you to share your screen there, Jason. All right, let's do it. And Instagram folks, I'm just gonna end it here for you. And uh, if you wanna join, you know where to go. And before we get into it guys, can we get a few likes on the on the page here? Uh, just like this and uh, and it gives it a bit of a nudge on on the YouTube algo. Right, so this is where we're at. I need to jump into your machine, so I'm gonna request a remote control. You just need to approve that. Boom. Okay, cool. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit replay. Let me just double check that this is gonna work. Oh, which one we're on? Let's go back to this one. Um, oh, is it laggy, is it? I can see something happening. Is it actually changing? Oh, okay, sorry, I'm looking for these to change. Okay, hit replay. Can you see a red line on your on your trading view? I can't. Mm -hmm. No? What happens if you hit replay mode? Ah, that's weird. Let me see if try I... Try again? I'll try it again. Maybe my mouse click's not hard enough. Yeah, it's uh, that's right. I think my mouse is dying, to be honest. Um, okay, cool. Now, what I need you to do is, uh, is spin around, put your hands over your eyes for about two minutes whilst we um, go back in time and, and find you some entry points here. So we've got GJ. 
Okay. Come on. <laughs> this is really laggy for me. Oh, we're on daily. Right, okay, we're on daily. Okay, come on. This will do. This will do here. This is really laggy for some reason. Come on. <laughs> I'm pressing. Oh, my mouse is really dying here. Right, there we go. We've got one. One down. My word. And this one's GJ as well, isn't it? So is that the one? I've, okay. Let's just double check this. Let's double check this. Okay, 2018. Okay, so this one here. It's just a bit of a lag. Sorry, I'm gonna. It's gonna take me a while here. It's gonna take me a, a minute or two to get this. I'll do it. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I can't even hit the replay mode. I'm gonna try a different pair. I'm gonna try. Uh, Euro US dollar, see if that works. And we I've got a solution if this doesn't work. Okay, I think we might need to go to this solution because this is too laggy. Oh hang on, it's it's kicked in here. Okay. Okay, Jason, do you want to turn around? I think this is gonna be take too long to do if I just do this. So what the solution is um, what I need you to do is, I don't know if it's no, so you make these really small, uh -huh. so that they're, you, you can do it, um, so they're basically a flat line, so you just drag, drag the side bit down here, so it's basically a flat line, okay, so you can't really tell where the price is, so <laughs> then you're going to just hit replay, and go back in time to I think don't think you can go any further back than like 2000 and let, I'll just pick a date to go back to and you just find the approximate date okay right. so replay and then you can expand it and we can have a look so um I would say yeah uh, December 17 that's good yep let's pick cool. that yep 2017 yep and then just you need to do uh GBP USD as well I've done one of them Same thing, just make it really small. <clears throat> All right. And uh, and then go back to, let's just, so GBP USD, go back to, um, uh, go back to March 2018. Okay, and GBP AUD, jump in that one. Okay, go to um, go to uh, uh, October two thousand seventeen. Approximately, yes, I mean, it's, yeah, that, that's, that's decent, yep. That'll do. And then the very first tab, I didn't set up, so if you want to go to that GJ, the first one. Yeah, that one there, and let's go to, um, yeah, let's do, uh, let's do, let's do um, August 2019. We won't go too far back on this one. Yeah, that will do. That'll do. Okay, cool. Which pair are you gonna start with? I can just start with this one, DJ. Okay, folks, um, there are, by the way, I should mention, there are scores over there uh, on the...
trading that site so there's a link under the video and I'm just going to chuck a link up on the chat as well so if you do want to go and see this and keep track if you jump away and come back uh, then this is going to be uh, the place to go and get the scores of the current trades that he's taken. So, um, yeah, GJ, over to you. Expand it on the side now. Do remember, don't you can't go to like the really low time frames, or it'll kick you back to the start. We'll have to start again. And All also, right. um, let me know when you're about to take a trade because I'll just make All sure right. it's lined up. Yeah. So um. So yeah, I'll keep it all uh, all above M30. Now, if I hit reset chart, will that mess up the replay? Yep. Okay, so just expand it. Yep. I think if you double click, maybe that does that work as well on that sidebar. There we go. Yeah, it's the one. Cool. And here we are in August 2019. All right. So you just want me to. Uh, to uh, hit the, um, I can just press this button, right? To uh, yeah. push forward to try to find the entry. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So obviously, just on the uh, hard time frame, we can see we are in a downtrend. Um, so the first thing that I would do is go ahead and identify um, some support and resistance. So I'll take my horizontal ray and I'll mark out one of these key levels of uh, support. Um, obviously, we saw influx of price uh, then to get filled and pushed back up. Um, but notice, once again, as we look down the line, there was a break and retest uh, of that support area, which just kind of lets me know it's, it's a, you know, a real zone. Now, what I'm going to do is come over here, mark out a resistance area. And even as we look at this area here, that's our most active level of support. So let me go ahead and jump down to the H4 time frame once again. Higher time frame. Uh, it does look we're, like we're in a bit of a downtrend. Doesn't mean that we couldn't get some type of push uh, back up to this uh, key level of resistance. So let me go to four hour, and once again we'll keep everything above M30. So as we can see, uh, once again we are still in a current downtrend. Let me take. Um, my random line and mark out some key areas. Uh, once again, my moving averages let me know that um, price is still currently pushing down. Even if we were to uh, use a trend line just to, once again, trend lines don't hold a bunch of weight. They just kind of give you extra confirmation of what you're already looking at. So as we can see, price was moving down. Um, I'm gonna delete that. And what I'll do is mark out a couple key levels right here and right here. All right, I'm gonna take my fib and I'm going to put my fib at the true drop just to see if we have some retracement. So this, this high right here where we can see we got a, a good crossover, um, I'm gonna put uh, my point A there, my point B at this level of support so that way we can uh, see if we're expecting any counter trend setups uh, before we continue down. So let me go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. It looks like we're getting um, some, some respect around this level of support. And once you get a break, this is what's key is before we just decide to hop in and short, um, we, wanna, we wanna let, and once again, these are four hour candles. So we wanna allow price to actually make a decision for us. So I'm gonna to bump to M30 real quick. Now we are having, um, once again, this key level support did get broken. So it looks like it could be potential pushes to the downside, but this is what I would have been uh, looking for potentially now. I didn't, obviously, I, I was fast forwarding on the uh, on the H4 time frame, so we were time hopping considerably. Uh, it's my first time doing a challenge like this, so it's like, you know, in, in live time, what I would have been looking for is, once again, like we talked about on the last call, is these two uh, M30 candles that completely uh, break below. But now at this point, I would be chasing price, so what I'll do is fast forward on M30 to see if we get a potential retest or if we get a close back up above this uh, this zone. 
But if I were to have entered here, it would have been because of this one, two candle. But once again, we won't chase the trade. This is, let's say we fell asleep and we didn't, you know, see that break of support occur, then we would have to wait. So what I'm going to do is move my, um, my uh, four hour time frame fib down to here. All right, and I'll fast forward a little bit on the M30 time frame. Zoom in. All right. Hopefully, we can get a pullback. Otherwise, she is just absolutely dropping drawers right now. <laughs> So even looking for a small pullback or area to enter here, what I'll do is just come to this uh, previous high that we occurred on the M30 and I'll just draw a fib uh, range even from here. So it would be 61A area if it does pull back to this zone um, that we could be looking for potential setups to the downside um, because in my opinion, trying to guess or catch a counter buy up to this area, yes, it is 120 pips but I would just need to see more. And once again, me trying to like forecast that shift of, you know, it going back to retest, I would be on some lower time frames. But since we're H4 and M30 predominantly today, um, let's just wait. And remember guys, I wait for the blue to cross over the red before I'm even thinking about counter trend buys. Because mm -hmm. notice, even as we look back in time, before we got a drop, the red crosses over the blue, and we saw some, some movement. Before the drop, the red crosses over the blue. We got one, two, three, four candles. We saw movement. Red crosses over blue. One, two, three, four out of the six. And we broke the support zone. So just little things that uh, little things you guys can look for. Yes, yeah, so a new one. I, well, not a new one. I mean, but I never really sort of thought of like, thought of it like that in terms of the, the moving averages and the counting of the bars that said i did build a robot similar to that uh not so long ago right right and I it mean, worked fairly well it's just another like it's just another indicator you know it's like once again these these things only hold so much weight you know chasing money is like chasing the wind you never catch it so you don't want to chase a setup. Like the best thing you can do sometimes is sit on your hands and yeah. just wait. You know, the, the interview that we did was about one trade. You know, uh, some, yeah. some people would have been cool with that one trade for the whole year. It's like, I, you know, I just made my annual income. I, I don't even have to trade anymore. But obviously when you start to develop your craft, even as we see here right now in the 30 minute time frame, it's like, this could be that pushback that we're talking about. And that yeah. is a good 120 pips. We finally got a nice big influx of uh, bullish momentum. We are against the overall trend. So this is where you would have to be uh, a little bit careful, but let me just pull, let, you know, let's just see real quick. Let me pull up my long position. And I'm not gonna say that I enter right away, but what I do is I like to at least get a feel for where would 40 to 50 pips be if I did enter. So it's like, if I enjoyed this 30 minute candle enough, once again, if I bump back to H4 real quick, the red will still be over the blue. So you always have to keep in mind without the confluences of both time frames, it is a little bit riskier of a move. So it's like, I'm going against the overall trend. My moving averages are telling me that it is looking to go down, but you see, you know, on the four hour time frame, we do have the, our, one of our full, our first um, bullish candles, even though it's not f like completely filled, we are starting to see, you know, instead of all bear, 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 now mm -hmm. we're starting to see some buyers come back in the market, especially after a nice uh, big whip on the four hours. So let's bump back to the M30. And so I should mention when you um, jump up the time frames, uh, if you're about to enter, um it will paint the whole four hour bar so just keep that in mind when um when you when you're thinking oh, okay i just want to i'm about to enter i want to go and check the four hour at that point you might see the entire trade play out or 
you might be taken in and also yeah so just let me know and we'll, we'll mm-hmm. walk and the way best part it. is i maintain my order on the m30 anyways yeah okay so cool. i'll let the i'll let the trade play out on m30 and then we won't we won't even have that issue because that's how i maintain is all m30 work and like i told people before if you're doing your overall technical structures on the hour one time frame then bump down to m15 to maintain or bump down on m15 to look for you know some of that lower time frame correlation because you go from h1 to m30 you're looking at the same thing you go from h4 to h1 yes there's slight differences but it's like the correlation is too close uh where i i feel like h4 and m30 those are the two you know that's batman and robin yeah h h1 m15 is batman and robin so figure out what you know what time frames work best so let's fast forward a little bit okay we got an indecision candle okay so because price and once again like you know what i mean i'm I'm down to pull the trigger that's one thing you'll notice about me is if i see once again the blue crossing over the red this is counter trend but we can literally risk 50 pips below this level of support. Let me take a a random line. You guys can see. It looks like they're starting to become some buyer momentum, uh, you know, just on the lower time frame. Even though H4 says, hey, we're still trending down, we had a break of support on a higher time frame. Remember, no retest, no entry. So I wouldn't even be looking for shorts. Uh, regardless of this first entry, I would have caught this. And then once I saw some type of rotation occur, I can close my sell. Obviously, we didn't enter. So now I'd be expecting some type of retest around this key level of support. So right here, we have a one to six, uh, you know, three ratio as far as the risk to reward is concerned. But I do anticipate it coming up to this level for some type of retest before uh, dropping again. So based off M30 time frame alone, um, I'm cool with this. I'll enter uh, right here just because of the fact that we are expecting some retest of support. We did get this big uh, bullish move. And once again, we could get completely violated. You know, like it could continue to drop, stick to trend on the higher time frame and go create new levels of support. But the key is not being afraid to miss. Mm. You know, like I don't think Michael Jordan would ever hit a game winner if he was afraid to shoot in the first place. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this shot. This is 89 pip reward, uh, 53 pip stop loss with pound pairs. 40 to 50 pips is a good, you know, healthy range for you to not get stopped out, um, you know, easily. So what I'm going to do is fast forward. And once again, we have this big bearish candle uh, occur, but, you know, we haven't been, we haven't completely lost just yet. The key is that even would still give me some level of assurance that, hey, you know what, it's not it's not completely terrible, is that we're still maintaining this uh, level of support. So. And this candle right here is when you're sitting there watching your MT4 and you're like, oh, shit, you're like, oh, dang, (laughs) am I about to get stopped out? And then all of a sudden you get a big. 30 minute candle like that. And that's when you're like, okay, I'm back in the game. But once again, nothing is official until it's official. So let's continue to uh, let price play out. A lot of, you know, consolidating at this point. So for the guys that are joining, we're just in the first trade here uh, of the five. (laughs) It's playing havoc, trying to get out of the, uh, the drawdown. So you can exit it at any point. You don't need to wait for it to hit one of the one or the other. It's up to you. Okay. Then you can also move your stop to break even and and into profit or, or whatever. You can move it closer. You just can't move move it further away. So even at this point, obviously, what you can do is you can you know delete your random trend line. Once again, trend lines only hold so much weight. Don't enter a trade specifically from trend line. But even as we see here. You know, the red is starting to cross over the blue again. So it's just something that we would be wary of. But um, not getting stopped out uh, out the gates just kind of lets me know we are slowly but surely still creating higher highs and higher lows. 
So, you know, just be mindful of that, even as you're sitting in drawdown, even as you know the overall trend is still um, bearish. So we will maintain this order. Um, nothing has truly been violated yet as far as our support is concerned. And keep in mind, guys, these are 30 minute candles. So one hour, every two candles, one hour, two hours, three hours. It's the, the patience game, you know, just deciding um, how long you want to maintain, especially since we are starting to see that red crossover blue. But um, I'm still solid on the fact that, hey, you know what, let, let, let's see what happens. We entered this trade for a reason. We didn't get stopped out. So let's see what happens. Now we see the red is starting to uh, cross over slightly considerably, but All right, once again, like I said, delete it, the, the trend line. This is, th these are some sometimes the worst trades because it's like you enter, you go immediately into drawdown, you come back into profit only about 14 pips, mm. and then you're back consolidating around your entry. So, you know, once again, it's like, let's, let's review. We're, we're in a four hour downtrend. On the M30, we're expecting some type of counter trend move back to our four hour level of resistance, right? Support broken turn potential resistance. And now we're seeing price um, slowly but surely try to decide, you know, does it want to keep pushing low and create a new level, uh, you know, a new floor or is there a retest occurring? But based off of, you know, this, this little um, move and the blue still being over the red, we'll still maintain. And the annoying thing is that the, like the furthest that went was the initial push and like now it's sort of you're trying right. to get back there i mean i don't know how many times i've seen that in my trading where you get that initial push it's like ah oh, you know you finally right yeah and then it and then you, you end up getting all these like crap this crap for about you know three times as long as you've just been in that sort of initial push and you're like why did i not take profit then uh, but that you know hey look this is you, your goal is much higher here Honestly, you know, the crazy thing is like at times I wish trading worked this way. At times I wish once you set a parameter that you were that you had the ability to just fast forward the candles, uh, which is why I feel like a lot of people scout because they want, you know what I mean? They want the trade yeah. to hit immediately and don't always have the patience to just enter and then walk away. Yeah. And so oftentimes, you know, especially once you get used to, um, you know, setting positions, is you'll place your trade and just walk away, you know, if you're a swing trader. Obviously, you maintain to a certain extent, but if it's good risk, you, you know, you don't have to stick glue to it. But right here, this is ugly, but because um, I'm still seeing, ah, yeah, this is ugly. Uh, well, you know what, though? Like like I said, we'll, um, we'll at least... Downtrend could be could be 23.6. Uh, continuation, but looks like we could get this red crossover, which which does scare me, but. Hmm. Sorry, I'm thinking which, you know, once again, this is this is what you are you'll catch yourself doing in a live trade as well because you have 30 minutes for a whole candle to complete and, and we're doing this in, in seconds and minutes. Yeah, we didn't do the whole lot and um, uh, just, just under uh, an hour and a bit. Even with my random line, it's like this is our, our short-term level of resistance and and we were unable to break it. And we did get this um, bearish engulfing right here on this last... Uh, this last... Uh, time it tested resistance. So it does have me slightly worried. This is where oftentimes we'll bump to the five minute 
and just kind of see where where's the five minute trending. Like if I get the red over blue on the M5, then I'll be potentially looking to short uh, past this Cause area. Because we're in, um, you could probably go to the M15 on this one because we're in 2000. Oh, actually, mm, you I, could I, possibly, I wouldn't it. risk it, but it. You, you might. Yeah, be I won't to mess it. with it. I won't mess yeah. with it. Uh, but in so, fact, it, uh, yeah, it'll kick us out anyway and do the whole trade otherwise. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, at this point, you'd probably be, it's almost like a break even because you stopped so far. So if you did exit, it'd be like, you know, minus point, like, like point one or something um, R, which is which sort of leaves you a basically break even for the next four trades. That's all good. I maintain, I maintain the order. You know, it's yeah. at the end of the day, uh, if it does, if I do decide to close, then I'll just I'll get in the other direction. Which you know, once again, there there you have it. The uh, the red candle, uh, the red is crossing over the blue. So at this point, let's see here. Um, That'll be about minus point five R. We're 25 pips in drawdown, so you know we would have to decide. Okay, do we close at this point, or do we, you know, hold the order? Especially knowing that on the four-hour time frame we are still in a downtrend. It's, um, you know, it's iffy. But the good thing is, I would say Actually, is there you the go. Fact it's, that just, it's, it's just painted the rest of that candle what it's done. So it's gone all the way down, and then oh no, is that that is that the candle you're in on? Yeah, this is the same. This is the same candle. Oh uh, yeah, so, so it's just painted it. It's gone. It went further down, and then it's popped up again by the looks of it. Oh uh, yeah, H. It's H four. So yeah. Um. Once again, it's like you set your parameters. You know what I mean. Just just let it play out. If you lose, you lose. You win, you win. Yep. Red is completely over blue. So. A lot of consolidation. And what what are the moving averages you've got there? Eighteen MA yeah, and an eight, eight EMA. Eight and eighteen. Yep. Okay. And once again, they only hold so much weight. God bless. Oh, blimey! Holy <laughs> shit! TP done. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my gosh, bro! What the hell? That was in thirty minutes. Like <laughs> that, was, that was a thirty-minute candle, bro. What date is that? Wonder if that's bro, like, that what happened that day. Bro? Was that a Brexit or something? I need some trades, bro. I don't know. I need some trades like that, bro. I, <laughs> what date I was can't that? Maintain the order. Well, can move uh, your mouse up a little bit. We might be able to see. Yeah, this right here was uh, uh, August August thirteenth or uh, August yeah August thirteenth two thousand nineteen. No idea. Was it a Brexit announcement? Maybe something like that. That's a crazy candle. Wow, that is a crazy. Okay, so that was so you got uh, so you're up one point six six R. You're up one point six six R. You can jump into the next GJ chart. That's a well look look. That's a great analysis, guys. Guys, if you haven't liked this video already, which I can see only thirteen of you have liked it, come on. If you're sitting there watching this, this is great education to start off with. He's just done a one point six six R trade to kick it off, and I guarantee I can tell you this much for free. Like most people lose the first trade for whatever reason. So well done. Do you want to move into the next chart right. and um, we'll wrap this one up and then move in? The key, yeah, and all I want to say in the wrap up is, you know, some people would have only put like a 40 pip stop because it's like, oh, you know, my, my mentor says only use 40 pips. Or the key, guys, is to trade the chart, not like stick to, oh, I can only use 30 pip stops or only use 40, like, Trade what you see. So I think I had like around this area, 54, 55 pips. The reason being is because it was low, this previous level of exhaustion. So when we did start to see that bullish momentum occur, once price said, you know what, like I, I've created a new low, but I still need to go retest. Now what's fortunate, it's fortunate to win, but unfortunate is the fact that the way I would have maintained this order would have been then put a fib from point A to point B on the actual bullish candle. So that way, as long as 23.6 or 38.2 don't get broken, you can then maintain that order. But I mean, good God, that is <laughs> that is nuts. That's like another 
60 some pips that it shot up. I wasn't even anticipating that, but that is just wild. So yeah, we'll leave that at that. We'll go to um what what's the um dot, dotted line? Just because it's interesting that it went to that dotted line. The, which one? The dot blue dotted line that was on most of your charts. At the, just where price like ended at that dotted line. Oh, uh, which one? The bit the thick dots, the thick blue dots where price ended. Right here? Yeah. Oh, the the dotted line is just that's how I have my price uh labeled so that way I can Oh, like, that's, that's the active that's the current price, is it? Yep, current price. Oh, right. Okay. So that's interesting. That's gone exactly to where current price is in 2020. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. That is the current price on the chart, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. One, I'm confusing one, everyone. Seven. Right. Yeah. Jump into the next one. Let's have a look. Uh, maybe All do right. a different pair just to, just to mix it up a bit if you want. Okay. I'll go to GU and um, we will expand. And once again, that was a counter trend trade. So, like, it went against the high time frame and and you know yeah. what it was expect, expected to do but trade the market you know like it's gonna give you it's gonna give you setups it's just stick to it and that even that is like a prime example of if you like said ah oh, now the reds crossed over the blue and we're getting bearish momentum we should just close and short it and then we would have looked like fools because then we would have taken two losses so it's sometimes just best once you pull the trigger stick to it now I see we're on the daily, and once again, guys, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bore you with, you know, regular technical analysis. But as you guys can see, we are creating higher highs and higher lows on GU on the daily time frame, letting us know that all the way back in 2018, uh, we are at least it looks like it is coming to either test this high or create a new high. So what I'm going to do is zoom in now, you know, I'll, t I'll delete these real quick. Just wanted to you know, remind you guys overall, higher time frame is most important. Oh, there we go. So daily, we are in an uptrend. We're going to uh, create a daily um, level of support and resistance. Yeah, I still can't get over that 30 minute candle. That was gnarly. <laughs> I haven't seen anything like that in a while. Uh, uh, I haven't seen it on the show, that's for sure. Um... <laughs> that was nuts. Okay, so there's our support. Once again, it you know, somebody would say that that's a terrible level of support because you know it's on top of a candle, but I like the median. I like where price decided to tap here and it decided to tap here three times. So We'll be able to get crispier as far as our support and stuff on lower time frames. This is our resistance. Now let's go to four hour. All right. And it looks like we just missed a, a great entry opportunity to at least push on, you know, higher. So what we'll do is once again, we'll be patient. We might get a wick down on M30. Um, something to uh, to give us a, a, a shot, you know, try to catch something. So all I'm doing here, guys, is once again, random lines. You'll notice, you know, and this is something I've gotten, gotten away from. There's no point of you marking up support and resistance of two years ago. Like trade was going on right now, um, especially for 80 pips, 100 pips, whatever it may be, like, you know what I mean? You don't you don't need to go look at what happened two years ago. Look at what happened on H4, M30. H4, daily H4, M30, we don't even, that's three time frames. We don't even need the other ones as far as this is concerned. So once again, guys, trend lines aren't the deal breaker, but they do, look at that. That's clean. That's beautiful. Mm. So we had price start to, once again, overall uptrend on daily. We had price start to counter trend, was respecting you know, this area never truly broke support. Even if I take this rectangle here, you guys can see this is a true key level of support. And y'all will also notice too, you know, very clean, very clean charts, like not a bunch of indicators, not all these like different things, just clean, keep it simple, keep it clean and trade what you see, trade what you see. So let's go to M30. I guarantee you there's the blue over the red, beautiful. Perfect. 
And M30 will just show you what you're looking at on H4 even crispier. So once again, a lot of respect around these areas. These um, certain trades could have even been, you know, counter trend shorts. But us being an overall uptrend, this is great. This is great. I like this a lot. So let me just go ahead and start measuring. Let's see. Let's see, it's tough because it, that's 70 pips, almost 100 pips below our low. So that's not something I could just jump into right away. Now, what I will do is start fast forwarding um, and we'll look for a retracement zone to then get in on the long, uh, depending on you know what we see. So we'll take our fib, we'll go point A at our support right here. Let me grab my fib, point A. Uh. What I was gonna say on the last one was it's quite interesting that not a lot of the other guys that have done this willing to take counter trend trades in um <laughs> right when it when it's I mean, on and they end up waiting like you know months and months and months <laughs> before taking one trade and exactly. everyone in the, everyone in the comments gets to start slagging them off going i would have taken 20 trades by now so I mean, yeah it's, it's good really to see do, you know because it's like we show up every week and we get on the charts and it's like there's too many people and once again, this is my first time doing this with you, but I feel like there's too many guys that will come on here and try to wait for the perfect setup versus in reality, they'll be trading every week. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I don't, once again, I don't care about being wrong. We were only 10, 15 pips from stopping out, but it's like, if I saw that as my parameters in the first place, then stick with what you saw, you know, don't let, don't let the markets fake you out and then end up getting in the wrong way. So Let's um, play this out a little bit. I do expect some level of retracement. Hey folks, I'm sure we can get to 50 likes over there. There's there's definitely more than 50 people watching. So if you haven't hit the like button, you know what to do. It's free education here, guys. Free game for the streets. So once again, like we talked about before as well, you know, if if we were just showed up a little bit sooner, once we got this 30 minute and I'll zoom in so you guys can see, once we got this 30 minute candle close above this key level of resistance, remember guys, it was in a counter trend. So it broke out over here, right? And this is what's so beautiful about the charts is especially with this, these pound pairs is look at this structure swap, like gorgeous. Can't get more textbook than that, where you're getting a counter trend sell and then finally price decides you know what buyers are back in business and we're going to break this level of resistance we're going to break the trend line and retest brilliantly now this is where they get people this is where they get people is right here this one candle two candle breaking support there i guarantee there's a bunch of people sell 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 they're like yes we're in profit and then boom it jumps back up above support remember resistance turns to support. So I always teach people, imagine price as Mario from Mario Party or, you know, Super Smash Bros. Where once Mario jumps and breaks through that level, he then lands on that level and can keep jumping higher. And so that's what happened here. Now we had price continue to push up. And as you guys can see, uh, this one candle right here is where I would have entered and we would have been going along. So now we have to play the waiting game of you know trying to find some type of area to get in on retracement or if anything we can take a counter short uh let's see here if we do see some type of resistance occur we could take a, a potential counter short to this area but we'll be patient we'll be patient so okay you know interesting we're starting to get some uh some bearish momentum we are getting a potential crossover. And once again, that's why you're going short just yet. Okay, okay. Oh God. Oh, here we go, we're good, we're good. <laughs> scared, I was out, but what happened? scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle of the sauce. Um, okay, yeah, so once again, you know, we'll continue to maintain. This is where uh, you can whip out also a trend line as well, just to uh, 
just to give yourself an idea. Okay, cool. Price is continuing to trend up, but once again, we got a 30 minute candle that closed bullish and we're still continuing to create new highs. So we'll wait, we'll wait. Interesting, interesting. This is where it's like, okay, pull our 0%. Remember point A was here, point B was here. It's not always gonna be picture perfect, guys. Remember that too, you know, it's not always gonna be picture perfect. Um, this one 30 minute candle, So we have a 23.6 uh, retracement that didn't even get hit. Remember, 23.6 is continuation zone as far as part, uh, price con continuation slash consolidation as far as, as far as price reversal is concerned. Uh, we did get a big wick um, here in both directions. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so uh, it could end up being another counter trend that we, uh, another counter trend trade that we get on. Let me measure this real quick. Would it be 55 pips? Um, a 55 pip stop loss. And, you know, once again, the, the, the risk to reward ratio. Let me check H4 real quick before I do anything. Hmm. Okay, so we did see that we have we do have uh, some level of resistance up here, which means we could continue to uh, get some level of retracement down to the 618 area. Because I never see, or I should say, rarely do I see price just come and like wick that structure swap area and then just keep flying. I usually see it break past um, and then start to gain that bullish momentum and correction again as well. So. Let me just go back to uh, M30. Once again, this would be counter trend, counter trend. This, this is only one four hour candle that's really letting us know, hey, we're seeing some, you know, we're seeing some bearish momentum. So this is what I'll do. We will enter, I'll mark out the parameters. I, move, I put my stop loss, um, if I'm trading with the trend, I'll put my TP based on four hour and my stop loss based on M30. If I'm trading counter trend, then my TP and stop loss are both both based on M30 because I'm not looking to catch like a major move. Uh, I just want to get what the market is willing to take. So let's go ahead and use our short position. Fifty pips. And obviously, if you want to extend your targets or reduce your targets, I mean, you can exit at any point you want. You just can't. The only thing you can't do is move your stop loss further away. All right. So now we have entered the trade based off this M thirty break of support. Two, two 30 minute candles have closed. Um, not really super reassuring. Uh, the nice part is once again, what I, what I use for my moving averages is based off the red crossing over the blue. And we do see the red is on top of the blue, but once again, that's M30, H4, the blue is mm -hmm. still way over the red. So, you know, this is where you have to have to decide, do I maintain because I'm seeing some exhaustion or I mean, do I maintain because the red's over the blue and I'm seeing some type of uh, bearish momentum or do I just close out? Because this is basically, we're still at entry. That's only five pips. And um, I do like that one candle, two candles. So, you know, we'll let it play out, see if we can get another 20, 30 pips and then go to stops at entry. Um, that's, that would be my game plan okay. moving forward, but it is a little bit iffy. It is a little bit iffy. 
Mm, okay. So let's see here. Now we're probably about 20 pips, uh, 10, 20 pips, 13, almost, almost 20. Um, and we are still getting bearish uh, momentum. So, okay, cool. Now I'll put my stop at, at break even. Okay. Because All right. once Thank again, you. counter trend, guys, we just, uh, this is probably 20 pips in profit. Don't need to move anything. Just, just that's fine. We, we, we've got a note. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, I just like to, because I measure. I measure. I'm oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. With a GBP pair, we could easily get whipped out. But my thing is, is we're trading against the trend. You know, it's that's not ideally my favorite trade to take. Ideally, my favorite trade would have been, you know, this one, and then just have been able, uh, of this wick alone, our TP would have hit. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so because we do see this exhaustion occur and i know i need some level of pullback once again we had a break now we need a retest so i'll uh now make this risk free okay go i got that noted down it was 2.06 was the uh the r on that if we actually can you just go undo because if you decide to exit before it's going to be easier to calculate yeah just leave I that will. there so it's risk free yeah i know it's at break even yeah, it's a break even, and yeah. we didn't get the next candle just finished. We didn't we didn't uh, take a loss. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this. I believe this is probably like 50 pips, 46 pips in profit, uh, a lot of bearish momentum. So now, what's fun to do is take your sub fib, and let's go from. I don't want to take my. You know, some people will say, "Oh, we got to go to the top of the wick." Like, no. No, bro, like, let's go where all the wicks are touching. And you know what I mean? Where, where price is most common. Let's go there. And then let's use our sub fib. So notice how even our sub fib, our extension is right where I put the TP. You mm -hmm. know, 102 pips. Shout out to 102, the whole squad, the whole regime. Uh, that was my that was my house house number at uh, when I played yeah. quarterback at Memphis. So those guys know I got it on my wrist as well. Y'all know what time it is. But right now it's risk free. So we can maintain this order um, basically by going point A to point B where price is currently at and, um, you know, let it play out. Okay, so 23.6 uh, area could be, um, this could be the area where it's like it continues, but we have a nice retest uh, around the structure swap area. It's like, this is where it gets tricky because it's like, do I take profit or do I let all my, you know, 28 pips, do I leave my 28 pips on the table to keep going or, you know, do I close? That's always the, the, the tricky, uh, the tricky question. Got a question here come from, um, Aaron. Uh, actually, Aaron, Aaron, who's been on the been on the show before and done my scalping challenge, uh, got in the final. Welcome, Aaron. Uh, he's he's asking the question: What's your weekly percentage gain target? What do you look to get from a? Or right, do you I even know have some one? Some people are like, "Let me get three percent, five percent," and you know, I'm very, I'm in a very unconventional trading because I'm not on the charts every week. You know, I found like, especially having an athletic background, is I'm an emotional person. I, like I leave my heart on my sleeve. So if my mental isn't where it needs to be and my emotions aren't where they need to be, then I stay as far away from the charts as possible. Doesn't mean I won't still mark them up. And guys, one of the best things you can do is even if you don't take the trade, take the trade. What I mean by that is set your parameters based off, hey, if I were to hop in the trade right now, where would I place my stops and where would I place my TP? And that allows you to trade without ever even having to execute anything. So um, based off this, it's like, you know, my heart's telling me, ah, I don't want to get, I don't want to get stopped out or break even because, you know, we did go, we did go 50 pips into profit. And now we're only, I believe, um, at around, we're at around 30 pips. 30 pips in, in, in profit and we don't have anything else risk um, on the board. So, so where's your stop? So you're moving your stop. Yeah. Um, honestly, I might just close. I might just close okay. this order only because 
30 pips on the table. You know what I mean? If like, can you move your... day, once okay. we made it risk free, then the risk to reward goes out the window. Like yeah. once you make it risk free, then there is no risk. So now yeah. I only have profits on the table. Yeah. And one of the worst feelings is going through all the, you know, mental prep work to get an entry, take it, go into profit 50 pips and then walk away with nothing. Do you want to do you want to move if you're going to take profit do all you need to do is move your take profit to that line and um then we can work out how much r that was it looks like it's under one r but it's um and this move. is where this is where i would go to m5 and see are we getting that bullish momentum and that was that's where i'm like okay bet i'll get out real quick because i'm not seeing that continuation flow yeah so just based off this alone um that's a 30 pip trade Point we'll six one. Yeah. Point six one. Can you put your mouse over that again? Just uh, over the trade. Point six zero point six one. Ah, uh, okay, cool. 0. And just 6, for 1. just for you know, just for shits and giggles. Excuse my language, but let's, let's see. You know, yeah. Let's, let's see, see how it would have played out. There's two a lot of consolidation, huh? I'm just updating your score there. Um, let's go jump back and have a look. Oh, yeah, wow. Lots of consolidation. So um, I'm yeah. guessing that I would have got stopped out uh, just oh, based off very, the spreads alone. Yeah, exactly. And once again, guys, don't be greedy. You know, the, the, When I give advice to y'all, I'm giving advice to myself. Like I'm speaking into myself through you, you know, and... Uh, these are things I have to remind myself daily. Also, I want to remind people, a lot of y'all might be looking at me as like some guru, some mentor, some sensei. I'm a pup. I'm a puppy in this game. Only been training for three plus years, you know? So just always keep in mind, you're writing your own book. You know, you might be on chapter one. Don't compare your chapter one to my chapter three. You know, keep crafting, keep sharpening the blade. But this is a prime example where we caught a nice 50 pit move. We saw... Uh, retracement on that move and, and we already knew we were getting into a counter trend trade so we take our 30 pips we rinse our hands we go about our day you know so um you want me to hop to a different pair now uh yeah go, go for it yeah jump on um any anyone you want all right we'll hop on eu one of the majors um eu is the most fun fact about eu is the most traded pair in the forex market so you know this is uh one of the big I think it's the biggest pair, huh? Yeah, it was. Like, yeah, it's definitely got the um, lowest spreads because it's, you know, it's so cheap to trade. There's so much liquidity in there. Now, um, so you're currently at two point two seven. Uh, so guys, if you are looking for the live scores, they are over there on the link at the top of the chat or below the video, or just go to Trading Art, look for live streams, and the scores are up there. Hit refresh. Uh, also, we're, we're still not at 50 likes, guys. Come on, we can get to 50. We've got six more to go. Who are going to be the six that hit the like Let's button to get us to 50? To do it. Yeah. We had 200 likes in the last one. So, um, so guys, we, oh, I'm sure we can get to 50. They, as somebody once okay. said, don't be stingy with myself, the likes. And I know, you're in, I know um, the videos are to go out there. And I always, I always, even when I would host events and try to tell people about even what Forex is, and um, I remember telling my friends, they used to be so caught up in how many people would come. And I used to tell them all the time, if there's just one person, just one, that comes, receives the information, and their life has changed, we did what we were supposed to do. Yeah. You know, we did our part. So salute to the 50 um, that are even on here right now, uh, you know, catching these gems, getting better, trying to level up on three p at 3 p.m. on a Thursday. So once again, we'll go through the same workflow, guys. You know, don't don't take too long on this process going through the workflow. We see when I zoom out on your USD um, daily time frame. Obviously, you guys can see this was a, a structure swap area when price finally did break. Um, it came back and retested. So now what I'm going to do is find a couple more areas for us to mark out, um, just so that way we can have some fluid workflow 
I do recommend as well um, making sure you can see your crosshair. Use the crosshair so even as you're trying to mark your support and resistance levels, that you know you can uh, you can see see them before you, you know. And the reason I, I always look for structure swaps. So this was our ceiling, turn floor, right? Ceiling here, ceiling here, ceiling here, turn floor. Okay. So on the daily time frame, it does appear as though we're in an overall a bit of an uptrend. We did just touch a major structure swap area on the daily, just things to keep um, in mind. But we did just create um, a potential new high. So let's see what's going on. The red is over the blue, but we did get a nice big bullish candle. Let's zoom in and take a look. All right. Zoom in a little bit more, get this cleared up. Perfect, a little bit more. Perfect. All right, wow. Okay, so we it looks as though we're um, getting some potential bullish momentum. Uh, this was our key level of support. All right, this is our level of resistance. All right. And once again, some people would say, why not up here? Because I look for the common place. I look for where does everybody come together and have tea, have lunch? <laughs> where does like where does price all come meet up at, at the same time? So this is where we see key level support. You can even take a rectangle and you know put it as a support zone. We are starting to get some momentum. Now, same thing that we saw literally on GU, like almost identical, very similar setup where we had, even if I drag this across, you can see the structure swap area. So this was support. Now, instead of it continuing to stay, you know, trending down, notice once again, like we talk about, if the candles violate those zones, then you know, no, no need to get in a short, especially since we know we're overall trending up. So um, let's go to 30 minute real quick, see what's going on. Perfect. And the nice part about EU is you can have a little bit bigger stops um, because of the fact that is the pip count is not as much. So just kind of gives you a little bit more breathing room than a GBP pair uh, or something along those lines would. Very interesting. Okay, so I'm going to draw a random line here at what was our uh, level of resistance. And you can see we already um, got the bullish rotation, at least, you know, the beginning of it. We did have price counter trending down, right? Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Um, notice high, high, high. So all of them stayed around this level of resistance and finally we got the break. So let's go ahead and pull out our long position tool and let's just take a look at, okay, if we do enter the trade, where could we have, you know, a, a healthy stop and what would be a good reward? So Obviously these candles uh, look beautiful, but I do expect some level of retracement. So we would wanna wait um, potentially just a little bit before we did over eagerly um, enter this trade. Go ahead here. Okay, so essentially the stop is below not only the um, resistance potentially turn support, but it's also a little bit below the 38.2 retracement zone. So because we did get all this bullish momentum, um, I'm not so sure I want to hop in just right away. So I'll mm -hmm. play the patient game. Hmm. Very interesting. So we know, guys, we're not in the trade at the moment. This is just nope, not in the trade. Yeah, just playing it out, being being patient because 
I don't usually just expect price to just go run without some level of retest similar to what we just saw on on, on GU. So we're, we'll just be patient, you know, we'll wait. Could end up, we could end up potentially getting into another counter trend um, short, but once again, you know, patience, patience. I do prefer swinging. So the first trade we caught 80 pips, second trade we only caught 30. Um, so, you know, it's having the versatility to adapt to the market. You know, Charles Darwin, who went to the Galapagos Islands, he studied the, the finches. He talked to and basically did a study that showed, you know, the finches that survived weren't the strongest, weren't the smartest. You know, they were the ones who were most willing to adapt. And as humans, especially in a society and environment that's constantly changing, is the ones who are most willing to adapt that usually have the most success. So another reason why we wouldn't want to hop in on the long, now what are we seeing with our moving average, right? We're seeing the red cross over the blue. Um, let me bump back to the four hour real quick. All right, now we do see that we are still overall in a, you know, a bullish rotation. Um, but I do once again, want to see price come back down just a little bit before I decide to you know, hop in the long. So we'll bump back down to M30 real quick. Time frame correlation, you know, we're time hoppers. And I'll let this play out. Like you said, we are not in the trade. Um, we are simply looking for a setup opportunity um, to get in. All right, so um, I do like this uh, setup, although we didn't get a true retest. Um, this 30 minute candle close lets me know that we are potentially looking to, you know, continue to push. So what I'll do once again, not completely entering just yet, but I am going to mark out this level of support, you know, so all three of them touch. And what's key as well is, you know, it touches over here, you know, so it's like mm. extra point, extra credit points, you know, it's, yeah. it's not even, yeah. it's not even that severe. But I do like this um, momentum. It's kind of letting me know price did try to drop. And for whatever reason, that didn't have the, uh, you know, the strength to maintain. So right here is a 2.6 uh, risk to reward ratio set up, only risking 36 pips uh, for a potential re reward of 97 pips. Um, 2.69. You know, it's decent set up. We are trading with the trend. So, you know, off this candle alone, I do officially enter the, the order. So we're in. And we got stopped out. Oh, minus so one. So we just lost uh, 36 pips. It's funny, yeah. So it went one to one almost with that wick, right? Um, which you know, had you so just assuming, so saying you are saying you were watching this, mm -hmm. at that what would you have been doing? Would you have been still just hanging on, or would you have been jumping? Yeah, to I mean, time frames or? especially since this, you know, we did get the crossover. We got the blue crossover. I'm seeing, you know, this bullish candle create new highs on the four hour time frame. We're still overall in a uptrend. Um, you know, once again, look at that wick. So if uh, on the four hour time frame I see a candle like this, then yeah, you know, it's a, a chance I could have closed. But um, yeah. it's just the concept, you know, you win some, you lose yeah. some, you got to rinse your hands of the blood and repeat, you know, re repeat the same. But now once again, uh, we have the red cross over the blue. Our, um, our area of support has now been back broken again. So you know, could could have another another move down to this area, 72 pips. I don't see anything in between to really uh, cause it to, um, you know, want to push back up to this area. So, okay, jump into the next chart. You've got two more to go. Uh, currently at 1.27 uh, up. Perfect. So we did GJ. We did GU. 
I think you got another G, J to go, and the G, A. So yeah, go G, A. Then we'll finish off with G, J. <laughs> Deep in the money. You're new to the channel. Would love to get any advice I have. Oh, look, all the advice is in over 100 videos on TradingNut. And not just videos, but also, actually, I suppose they're all in video format. So yeah, check that out. That's probably the first place to start. And get everything. All right, just marking out these key levels of. Guys, we're creeping up resistance. to a hundred likes. We got sixty-two, so which is great. So we hit the fifty mark. If we can get to a hundred, that would be fantastic. So if you're on the video, if you've just jumped in, and you haven't hit like yet, go and hit like. This is amazing, amazing free education you're getting here. I mean. I don't know about you guys, but I've probably learned about 10 different things, uh, at least 10 in the last hour that we've been on here. So, folks, hit the like button. This is fantastic. Whilst you're there, you may as well hit subscribe if you're not on the channel, and, uh, and we'll see you in future videos. All right, so GA, we can see uh, per usual in a downtrend. Um, you guys can see price was just kind of maintaining um, this level here where it's staying within these parameters. But once again, always keep in mind, guys, there's plenty of moves to catch. Even in a consolidating market on the daily, that's over almost 2,000 pips in ranging markets. So there's still um, plenty of opportunities. The key is just, you know, trying to maximize them and keep your hands clean. So I just marked out all the uh, kind of key levels that I see immediately four hour all right perfect okay so we did have this break you guys can see we had kind of key level of support okay we're getting this bullish push Expecting some retracement. So. Look, retest, look, retest. This is all still high at a break, retest. All right. All right, I'm gonna let it play out a little bit. A couple 30 minute candles. Okay, let me just measure this, see how low, 50 pips, 55 pips. Very interesting. Once again, have a lot of, a lot of playing around going on. Um, we did get a big bullish impulse, so it's a chance that we could um, get that drop back down to this area. So let's see here. Pips. So, uh... God, my, my call out for more likes didn't work. We're still at 63. What's going on, folks? What's going on? I'm sure we can get to 100 in this one. I'm sure we can. Now, um, there is a new concept coming up in uh, next year that I'm working on. So guys, this is gonna be different from this, the trader versus trader, the scalper versus scalper. It's actually gonna be pretty amazing. So stay tuned for that. That is probably gonna be announced early Feb, uh, late Feb or even March. So stay tuned. There's something in it for everyone. Um, now, we've also got the scalper versus uh, the trader versus trader this weekend. Forex versus JP Savage. So, guys, you want to check that out? That should be fun. 
Right. How are we looking? Are you looking to enter this? Yep, I'm. Uh, I'm thinking about it. Um, I do like the fact that once again, this is similar to what just happened with EU. We tried to buy EU, um, and after a big push, it's like if you try to if you try to hop in on the wave, it's almost like it, it knows there's going to be some type of reversal, you know, to go against you. So especially that big wick that we saw, you know. But the key is always on to the next. Take your loss, learn from it. And um, just always try to keep it in the back of your mind. So what I do see is this area of support. We do have a lot of consolidating occurring. And this area of support did get broken. We do have the red crossing over the blue and some bearish uh, momentum. But the thing that's tough is, once again, on the four-hour time frame, um, we did, you know, we did get that, that overall big bullish push. So that's what leads me to believe potentially, um, you know, we could be seeing some more movement to the downside uh, back to this area. But let's just hop back to M30 real quick. And the other thing, thing that's nice as well is at least our stop is placed above, you know, the last two four hour uh, wicks. Mm. So just always, you know, little things that kind of give you a little bit more peace of mind um, when it comes to that. So what's your, what's your typical win rate? And I'm sure I asked you this in the show. Like, would you win? I would 50, say 10? typical win rate. Like if I take ten trades uh, throughout the week, I would say like 60, 70, 80 percent, like around that range. Okay. Like I know a lot of people would be like, "Oh my gosh, how does he not know?" And it's like it's no different than when I throw passes. Like ESPN calculates it for me. You know, like. <laughs> like, and the other thing that's important to remember too, guys, is just because Steph Curry is a 45% three point shooter, that has no effect on his next shot. Like you think because Steph knows, oh yeah, I'm a 45% three point shooter. Like he's not thinking about that in the game. He mm -hmm. sees the opportunity, he pulls the trigger and the numbers will play out how they're supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you learn, you just keep learning, you keep learning. So, you know, my win rate varies. I just always try to look for the best setups um, possible. I have some indicators. I know you're big on um, EAs and uh, AIs as well. And I have some indicators that give me the alert as far as when, you know, resistance or support has been touched three, four times and then pushing the opposite direction. So then that allows me to take what I already know and blend it with, you know, tools. So let's go ahead and we'll hop into short um yeah we'll hop into short um and we got a 45 pip stop 132 uh pip reward what's uh, the risk on that the, the what's the r on that sorry just hover uh, 2.9 okay let's make a note um what does make me slightly hesitant is you know price once again guys this is where we're getting that structure swap price does respect, but I do anticipate it to bleed a little bit more. Um, I don't ever usually see it just say, oh, perfect, price respected, and now let's rocket launch. So, you know, we'll, we'll. End of line. A lot of consolidating. Now we're at break even. Because on a higher time frame, we are in overall like uptrend. The blue is over the red. It makes me hesitant on um, wanting to maintain, but this is one of those scenarios. It's like we only got price didn't really fully just start drowning. The furthest it went was 30 pips, you know. So once again, for those of you who are 20, 30 pip traders, you know, by all means, but 
this does make me iffy. I do see a uh, price potentially rocket launching. So I might just close that break even. That's cool. I can do that. Yeah, I think it's close enough. That it's going to be like point, or we might dock your point. Um, it's just over break even, so we might dock your. Or unless you want to wait for the say we're at break even, and we take the next bar, and if it wicks in, you'll get out at break even. So it's slightly, we'll dock you a couple of you know point. I'll read you on point two seven, maybe mid point. Yeah, there so you go. Right okay. there, so yeah, break win. even. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. 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 So, so now I, what I would do is I would, and once again, because I anticipated a retracement, then I'm, all I'm going to literally do is just move, is just move my own, my position. So I hopped out of the short, hop, hopped out of the counter trend short at break even. And then now what I'm going to do is look to go long because of the higher time frame. Uh, I just thought, you know, hey, we can maybe catch uh, a bit of a move to the downside. Um, but once again, guys, the structure swap and four-hour time frame is not loaded. Well, the good news is you don't need to carry on trading this one. You you jump to the uh, you jump to your final chart and um, oh, okay. So yeah. when it's break even, you're good. Yeah. You don't have to. Yeah, you don't. Need, yeah, you you break even, you're good. So okay, um, well, just out of curiosity, yeah. I'm just gonna, yeah. I just okay. want to see because you know, once again, we're not entering, but I just yeah. want to see. Well, holy consolidation. All right. Yeah. Wouldn't honestly wouldn't have even been worth the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So we did GJ. This so was, the, I think there's GJ. another GJ one. You've got a, uh, another GJ here. That one there. I think that was the one I set up. Yep. This one? Yep. Okay, cool. So we're back in 2018 somewhere. Yeah. That's it. Once again, I know a lot of a lot of people are like, "Oh, trend lines." I agree; they're not that. I don't use I don't use trend lines to then say, "Oh, I'm going to put my whole account on a trend line." No, I use them just to give my brain an idea of what's happening. So it's like we saw we had this bullish momentum, then that broke out, and now I'm going to be marking out some key levels uh, of support. And once again, some people will put their support down here, but I just see price respecting a lot more around this area. And because this is, is the daily, it's really not, in my opinion, massively important now. I'm still learning from a, a lot of people as well. I think one of the biggest mistakes that any trader could make is allow success to get to their head. Meaning like if I allow a 100K day to keep me from a $100 million day. And I hope that doesn't go over y'all's head. Like if I allow a little bit of success because I've never, you know, tasted that level of income to get to me to think I can no longer learn or be a student to this game. That would be the work like that hundred K would cost me millions. So never allow an amount of profit or a single trade to keep you from maintaining that mentality of, I always got more to learn. Hmm. Let's see here. Okay. So boom, we did the daily. Um, let's go to four hour. Perfect. Yeah, guys, if you want to, I can see in the chat there, there's some people that may be slightly confused to who's done the challenge and who hasn't. Head over there. There's a link at the top called Live Streams. You can get the live scores for here today, also below the video as well. Uh, you'll be able to see who's taken the challenge. You'll also be able to see these scores. And uh, and the current scores here, which we're at after four trades, plus 1.27 uh, R. So if you want to check that out, head over there. You can see how he's managed to get there. Um, we've got last trade here on GJ, so either you're going to end up with 0.27 if you get the full 1R, minus 1R, or you're going to get a half decent score here. And what's the um, what's the top spot? How much 7.65, I believe. Damn. Yeah. So yeah, you'll have to really shoot for the stars if you want to get that one. Um, let me tell you, 7.65, yeah. 
But then that's the top spot here. We've actually had the top score has been like 27 R. That's wild. Yeah, and it was a 15 year old kid from Sweden. That managed to do it. We he was swing trading on the daily, so we did. We have. I, I did try and curtail that a little bit in the next game that he played, and um, I said you got to exit within seven days, and he still managed to do. Um, I'll tell you what he did in the end. He still managed to do nine point three eight, uh, and then his compatriot from Sweden, another fifteen-year-old kid from Sweden. <laughs> I don't know. They both apparently lived in the same town. Um, uh, he got five point two uh, three two in the same thing with this seven day hold limit. That's so wow. That, I said, "What's Standard going on over there?" Trade on the daily. Yeah, I said, "What's going on in Sweden?" He's like, the, "It's the town is the most boring place in the world. I've got nothing else yes, to do." I'm not entering. I'm just putting my uh, putting my parameter. Yep. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and enter this on the long. Zoom out. All right. I will uh, make this stop about 50 pips. 50, uh, we'll put it right here on this low. Right. And we have, uh, just for the sake of the game, we have a 503 pip take profit uh, oh. based off the four hour projection zone. So. Okay. And where's your, um, where's your entry? My entry would be uh, right there. So we got the crossover and we see um, could come, could come uh, break this level of resistance. I'll go ahead and put a miniature stop once again, based off the four hour. So no, so you're going to enter at market. No, your stop loss has now changed because you've just yeah, it it's still yeah. the same. Uh, I put it as okay. forty nine pips. So okay. the risk cool. reward is ten point one. Okay. Okay. Ten point one. Ten point one. Okay, I'll make a note of that. <laughs> this will take you to top, mate. If you win this one, <laughs> that's the that's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens. Set you the know, precedent, we... big time. Forty eight point nine. Let's go to M30 again real quick. You know, and it's a pretty, the nice part is a pretty tight stop. So, you know, see what happens. To uh, speed this up, I'll just go to four hour. And yeah, it's a good idea. This is a big move, so. Hopefully we don't get stopped out. Ooh, that was close. That was close. <laughs> it was a good, good candle there to survive. Ah, uh, just got stopped. Ah, oh, well, there you go. That that was it. It was um, it was worth a crack, and I suppose at the worth end of the day, worth a crack, man. I was trying, to, yeah. I was trying to swing for the fences there. Yeah, and and I suppose at the end of the day, at least you didn't um, at least you didn't what's the word uh go to go like you know halfway there and then come all the way back to come and uh and get right out. right so, just stop that break even. yeah there's nothing worse than that so i'm going to just update your score here and then i'm going to share the screen and guys you can have a look at the the table and see where we ended up uh and where you're going to play so right let me just share my screen here um and Go back to that. Okay, cool. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, this is the one. Yeah, okay. 
Right, guys. So this is uh, this is where we're at. So, um, Jason, first of all, thank you for for coming on and doing this. This has been amazing education, I think, for everyone. And um, and thanks for being a, a sport about it and uh, and really getting into it and giving giving a lot of value. So you had five trades. You won two, uh, break even on on one. This GBP AUD. And then a couple of losses. You went for the big gun here on on the GJ at the end. Um, you crept over break even there with 0. 0.7, 0.27 R. Um, so yeah, well done. That's actually a half decent score and puts you sort of mid, well, lower to mid table here, um, just sitting under Uncle Ted uh, there. So well done, mate. Now, guys, um, this is before I let you wrap up here with with um, letting people know. So this is what's coming up on Sunday for me, Saturday for most of the rest of the world. Uh, we've got a trader versus trader special. We've got Forex, who was yeah second place, did hold the top spot for a little bit, uh, versus JP Savage, who hasn't really done this um, challenge properly. So hopefully we can get him to do it properly. Well, he have to. Uh, so that's trader versus trader special, and that'll be the last show for the year. Next year I've got something cool lined up for the trading nut viewers, which is completely different. Haven't seen this anywhere else. I've just started to get it underway. And I'll probably have a chat to you, uh, Jason, just after the show to see if you're interested in doing it as well. Um, do remember there are some, there's new members only content. So this is banned by ICT, the full story. This was uh, Institute Trader who was on the show. We've got the Daniel Savage's live Forex trading room. So this is something I attended. There's a short video of highlights on the main channel, but you can get the full unedited two hour session there as a member as well and look it's only two dollars ninety nine to sign up on youtube you click the join link should find it and also we've got the uh Druzy banks who was also a Banks student this guy do you know Druzy? i don't know him personally but i know him. and i did uh watch that that interview i enjoyed it he has a, he has a great story yeah so so you because i know you're a q banks uh uh, student as well um, he did a five thousand dollar trade it was a great walkthrough here you can go and check that out um, it was sorry it wasn't one trade it was a series of trades over the course of a day so a lot of fantastic stuff now um jason what's the best way for the guys to get hold of you follow you uh same way before qb stew on instagram qb stew um and once again you know i hop on these these calls just to try to continue to inspire and impact as many people as possible you know because at the end of the day uh no one trade or series of trades define you you know like us getting on here even the leaderboard whatever it may be um you know it doesn't define you as a trader i could have lost every single trade you know on the replay and that wouldn't define me as a bad trader just means I have more work to do. And we all do, you know, because the charts are a direct reflection of who we are. And uh, the sooner we can realize that, you know, the more we can profit. But um, I just appreciate you doing this, man, for the community, especially here in the States. Uh, you know, Forex isn't usually like praised or even known about. So if people truly understood how difficult uh, it can be to fight the battles of what we all occur on the, on the charts, then they will have a lot more respect for it. And so it's it's tough when you're in a niche or industry that people talk down on so much. Um, so I appreciate people like you bringing light to it in, in the right way, you know, showing people the transparency of, you know, how people go about their business, et cetera. But everybody watching, make sure you guys keep tapping in uh, to his videos and everything that he continues to provide. You know, there's very few people in this world that are like this individual here where he's always willing to give out as much content as possible trying to change as many lives and help as many people that he can so salute to you my guy cheers mate brilliant thank you very much for that i appreciate that now guys um do remember yeah so as uh, jason said if you do want to catch more videos like this hit subscribe we've got one coming up on sunday another live uh, you'll get notified of that to get notified you need to click the little bell and click all next to it uh, and be sure once you're leaving this, hit a like, hit the like button. If you haven't already, we only got 77. We could have got 100. We didn't quite get there. But hey, look, guys, we had a great bit of fun here today. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Or I'll see you in the show. Um, and make sure you check out the show from this week. It was a really good one. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Let's see in that stream. Brilliant. I'll just stop this here.